From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Good evening, folks. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. This evening, I want to talk a few minutes about uh, hemochromatosis. Now, there are a lot of people suffering from this disease, so I want to take a minute about uh, this disease. This is a common disorder where there is dysregulation of uh, intestinal absorption of iron. So we all need iron, and iron is an important uh, element in the body. But when iron's absorption is not controlled, it's going to get absorbed in large quantities and cause lot of damage to the organs. So basically it is dysregulation of uh, iron absorption resulting in the deposition of excessive amounts of iron in parenchymal cells with eventual damage and injury and resulting in uh, chaos. I mean there is so much damage to different organs in the body resulting in different kinds of uh, symptoms I am going to talk. This video I want to talk about the important uh, organs that are damaged by iron deposition and I want to tell you how it's going to happen. In normal human beings we have like up to 3.5 grams of iron but in these patients it will be more than 15 grams. So in normal human beings 2.5 to 3.5 grams is the iron concentration whereas in hemochromatosis it will be more than 15 grams. These patients will have hepatomegaly, skin pigmentation, diabetes mellitus, heart disease and arthropathy and hypogonadism. Those are the main important things these patients will be having. Their transferrin saturation will be elevated, their serum ferritin will be elevated and those are the most useful tests to diagnose this condition. Now cirrhosis is the major determinant of clinical outcome. That's why a liver biopsy is the first thing you do in the early disease to estimate the damage. So it is critical to diagnose this condition in early stage. Why? Because if you diagnose it early, you can do a lot of things to stop the damage. So it's very important, folks, so that you have a high index of suspicion for this disease. There is a... Um, um, so this disease, I mean, I need to tell you a few things. First of all, a lot of people will have genetic predisposition to this disease, but they are normal. Then some people will have iron overload without symptoms. There will be some people with iron overload with symptoms like fatigue or the problem. Then finally there are people with organ damage. So those are the four different char characteristics, uh, categories I would say of this disease. First of all, people having a genetic predisposition but no abnormalities. Secondly, iron overload without symptoms. Then there are people with iron overload and symptoms like arthritis and fatigue and finally there are people with iron overload with organ damage like uh, cirrhosis and uh, diabetes. Thus many subjects, I mean people who have this, uh, uh, th there is a, actually a genetic like C282Y. C282Y homozygous people are particularly at risk for this problem. Not saying that everybody with the C282Y is going to have hemochromatosis, but if we, but patients with that C282Y are at particular risk for this disease. And once the iron accumulation happens, that iron overload can go into different organs in the body, starting from joints and skin and uh, pancreas and heart and the liver. Now, hepatomegaly, let's talk about it before I go further. You see, we all know that hepatomegaly can cause problems like uh, cirrhosis, and uh, cirrhosis can cause um, portal hypertension. We know that. The liver is usually the first organ to be affected in this disease. So, hepatomegaly is seen in 95% of symptomatic patients. 
the liver is usually the first organ to be affected. Remember that point. Hepatomegaly is seen in more than 95% of symptomatic patients. Hepatic enlargement may exist. I mean, if somebody has hepatic enlargement like hepatomegaly, their liver function test could be normal. But you still need to follow them closely. What is going to happen? Because when cirrhosis happens, they will have portal hypertension and esophageal viruses. You see, cirrhosis could be coming from different things, not just hematochromatis, you know that. But the portal hypertension and uh, esophageal viruses associated with cirrhosis due to hematochromatosis is less than cirrhosis seen in other things. Now, hepatocellular carcinoma is very common in these patients. Remember that. So, liver is affected, then it's causing cirrhosis, and once cirrhosis happens, they are at particular risk for hepatocellular carcinoma. So, that's about liver. Secondly, skin. Skin is affected. Excessive skin pigmentation. The iron starts to accumulate in the skin, and they will get this metallic hue that is also called bronzing. So, the bronzing, the metallic hue, the slate hue, happens. So the characteristic metallic or slate gray hue, the bronzing occurs when the disease affects the skin. So that is number two. The first is liver, the second is the skin. So skin is affected, they will develop this characteristic of bronzing uh, on, on the face and the neck and external surfaces of the lower forearms, the dorsal of the hands and the lower legs and even in the genital organs as well as uh, uh, some scars also happen. So skin. Thirdly, you need to see the pancreas. When iron accumulates in pancreas, it eventually causes diabetes mellitus. So these patients develop diabetes mellitus, especially if they have a family history of diabetes. They are going to have diabetes due to hematochromatosis. So the iron deposits, and if they have other risk factors, they are more likely to get to diabetes mellitus. So once the um, iron starts to accumulate, they develop uh, uh, insulin resistance and uh, the insulin production dwindles and the patients slowly develop diabetes. Next, joints. Their joints are affected. Arthropathy develops in symptomatic patients. Usually occurs after the age of 50 and may occur as the first manifestation or long after therapy. So in many patients, they might come to you with joint pains, and if you investigate them, they will have hemochromatosis. The other interesting thing here is that their second and third first metacarpophalangeal joints are affected. That's an important uh, point to distinguish the idiopathic form of hemochromatosis from chondrocalcinosis causing hemochromatosis. So, remember those points. People with hemochromatosis can come with joint pains. A progressive polyarthritis involving like wrists and hips and ankles and knees may also ensue. So the acute brief attacks of synovitis may be associated with the deposition of calcium pyrophosphate. Sometimes they develop calcium pyrophosphate deposition in the knees and we call this uh, synovium, pseudogout. So synovitis or pseudogout due to calcium pyrophosphate deposition is also seen in this disease. Remember those, that's an important point. Some people come with uh, knee joint pains and you see calcium pyrophosphate deposition and the basic underlying disease is hemochromatosis. They also develop, uh, they lose articular cartilage, um, their joint spaces will get narrowed, they will, will diffuse demineralization, there is hypertrophic bone proliferation, and they will have calcification of the synovium. So the arthropathy tends to progress. I mean, sometimes you treat these people with the phlebotomy and remove the iron, but still arthropathy goes on. You see, there is some mysterious connection between iron and arthropathy here. Now, next organ we need to think about is heart. Cardiac involvement is the presenting manifestation about like 15% uh, of symptomatic patients. And the most common manifestation of cardiac involvement is congestive heart failure. Remember that, very important point. So the most common cardiac manifestation of hemochromatosis is congestive heart failure.
So if a patient comes, a young patient comes with congestive heart failure and, with, uh, and his skin is uh, metallic, what do you think the diagnosis is hemochromatosis? And patients, they can develop, their heart becomes enlarged and uh, many times they are diagnosed as idiopathic cardiomyopathy. But what is happening? They develop cardiac arrhythmias. They develop cardiac arrhythmias like premature supraventricular beats and paroxysmal tachyarrhythmias. Some of them develop atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, and varying degrees of atrioventricular blocks. So the heart is involved. Next, six, the gonads are involved. So the iron accumulates in genital organs and cause hypogonadism resulting in loss of libido, impotence, amenorrhea, testicular atrophy, gynecomastia, and uh, sparse body hair. So these changes are primarily the result of decreased production of gonadotropins due to uh, the impairment of uh, hypothalamic uh, pituitary function by iron deposition. So iron goes on the deposits and it wreaks havoc. So I wanted to tell you about uh, the major organ systems involved in hemochromatosis. First of all, we saw the liver causing cirrhosis, portal hypertension, esophageal varices, finally hepatocellular carcinoma. We have seen skin, they are developing this metallic uh, hue and the bronzing of skin because of the deposition of uh, iron in the skin. Then we have seen the involvement of uh, pancreas. As the iron accumulates in pancreas, they develop diabetes mellitus. Then we have seen the joints. In the joints, we have the accumulation of iron causing arthropathy, polyarthropathy, and many times the deposition of calcium pyrophosphate in the synovium causing synovitis in the knees, which we call chondrocalcinosis or pseudogods that is happening in these patients. And we have seen the involvement of heart. The heart, the most common, the critical involvement, the cardiac manifestation of this disease is congestive heart failure. And also they develop cardiac arrhythmias like atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation. And many times they are misdiagnosed as like some kind of idiopathic uh, cardiomyopathy. But if you take all the lab work, if you take all the history, you see that congestive heart failure in an young patient many times due to hemochromatosis. And finally we have seen hypogonadism as the iron accumulates in their genital organs. They develop hypogonadism resulting in loss of libido and other sexual dysfunctions. So that's about uh, uh, hemochromatosis. Hope you got something. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.